let's just start off with, you know, a 30,000 look ad mobile. Yeah. When you think about coming to an inaugural Mobile Moments conference, mm -hmm. yeah. what's exciting about mobile for you? You have a tremendous portfolio of very interesting brands. Yeah. Some of the brands appealing to uh, the core digital native uh, demographics, millennials and like, others to older demographics. Um, what excites you about mobile to be able to help your portfolio companies? Yeah. So I think, I think um, the most exciting thing is the spread between time spent on mobile and the current advertising spending that exists mobile right now. I think that that is that spread is substantial, and there's a very large opportunity to to close that gap. Um, interestingly, you know, my, my perspective on you know mobile as a whole is is I remain somewhat agnostic as it relates to the particular. Um, screen that a consumer's on. Um, really, we're focused on, from a media perspective, getting our brands around great content or creating great content and pushing it out on whatever device it's on. Um, mobile just is that primary device right now, and, and um, I just think that having a device, you know, knowing that we that we are a retailer but we're also a manufacturer, um, having. Um, more precise targeting, having access to somebody's device that, that's very close to our products on shelf is very appealing. Um, and so that's why we've just seen a, a lot of uh, focus on mobile recently across the organization. I've seen some of your case studies that you did. Uh, Marmont, I believe, the, uh, the big rock climber and... Paige Clausen. Yeah, yeah. It was, that was great. Um, how does that help a brand? Yeah. In so, the, from your perspective, we all know that it helps a brand, okay? Yeah. We know that it has you know, a tremendous amount of potential, especially on mobile, especially with video. But from your personal perspective, from what you get to see, what do you feel like it helps a brand? You know, content for me, um, it's, it's story making, it's storytelling. Um, it is a, um, instead of a one-way dialogue of talking at consumers, it's, it's really having a conversation with them. And content... You know, if you look at history and you look at what publishers have done traditionally, they built their entire business with content. Um, and brands historically have not really focused on content um, until the last few years. And so for us, we want to create own content. We want to be able to make that content um, basically appeal to as earned media, as owned media. Um, and we want to create more reason for consumers to come to our owned assets, basically. So content, again, for us is something that it's, it's, it's marketing really at the, at the basic level right now. Um, it's, that, it's that, again, that, um, that two-way communication that's going on. And um, so we're doing that across a lot of our brands, some brands more than others. Um, but in, in everything that we're doing, um, we're, we're really focused on you know, what, is the, what is the content piece of, of a particular media strategy. When a startup hears this interview and you've put out the word that you know, you'd love to meet a startup that has a direct relationship to some of your business goals. Mm -hmm. What are sort of the three things it would be good that they did, and maybe a couple of things that they don't do, sure. that will get easier for them to easier to get onto the radar if they're a, a mobile app developer, they have a mobile platform, mobile yeah. advertising, and like. Sure. So um, the, the biggest thing really is, you know, helping us understand what differentiates you from your competitors. Um, I see so many ad tech companies that come in to try to meet with us and explain to them, or explain to us uh, about their offerings, and they all begin to sound very similar. They have this proprietary information, they've, they have this exclusive on this third party data, they've got this particular um, software that they've licensed, or they have a patent behind. And so for us, it's really, um, you know, we, we will go in there and try to learn as much as we can. We'll actually reach out to their investors and learn from their investors, you know, what made them invest in this company. Um, because, you know, I have to understand what really the points of differentiation are. So that's the first thing is really understanding more about the company, the inner workings. Um, the second thing is, is who are their customers? Uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's fairly rare for somebody to come in there and say, hey, I want to meet your customers. I want to talk to your current customers before I consider doing business with you. Um, and so we actually will ask, we'll say, look, you know, if, if we're interested in your company and we're interested in, in some of these media platforms that you have, but because you're so nascent and there's not enough data points around your company, we'd like to talk to some of your customers. And so um, we ask for that. And then third <clears throat> relates to um, the overall sort of, you know, what sets you apart from everybody else. Um, and that kind of, I think that sort of dovetails into the first bullet point as well. But 
you know, would you be considered or would you be willing to offer a different type of compensation model with us? Instead of buying on a CPM or CPC, would you be willing to work with us on a performance-based model? Because if you say your product is so good, and especially if you're a managed service. Now, if you're software as a service, if, if you're running a business like that, then I understand that there's no real performance incentive because you're simply just licensing us a, a, a software. But if there's a managed service, then I think um, it incentivizes them to work harder on our, on our particular project. And so um, I'm all for performance-based um, programs with, with, with startup media companies.